Welcome aboard to the Blind Tinkerer's Workbench. I started making the dim bulb tester. I got the top all wired and um, a two conductor cord is all that's needed for it's only the bulb. It's coming down, it's coming down under under this and then um, I'm going to have this box here and the wires I got to I got another Romex connector in my electrical box. I got to put one up on top here. Have that wire coming down and then the other wire coming out of the bottom of this and it can be plugged into the isolation transformer which will definitely be. And the isolation transformer is plugged into the variac. It doesn't have to be. It can be plugged directly here. So the, the way I got these things set up, it can go here or here. And what I'm going to try to do for a shunt on the bulb, I'm going to try to mount a toggle switch, and I think I can probably get it down on the side over here, like this, on the inside. I think there's enough room. So what I got to do is to drill a hole in, in here, and that's going to be hard because you, if you see how these outlets, knockouts are made, you got the, the part that holds the knockout in is right here. So in reality, I need to drill down very close to that, the diameter of this um, threaded part here to go through because it needs to be down in this area. So it'll sit down in here. It's the smallest toggle that I've got that'll handle 120 volts. And what this toggle is going to do is short out the bulb. When I find out that the bulb does not light bright and the circuit is safe to run the full voltage on, it's a bypass switch. They're hard to get these outlets. My hardware store wants five and change for one, 20 amp. This is a 15 amp, that's all you need. I used to have a bunch of these. One of them went in here, but I thought I had more and I didn't. So I had to go and buy this and I bought this at Home Depot. And this was about three and a half bucks, so that was a little better. Of course, all the outlets now have are child resistant and it's a little tight getting a plug in here because they got baffles on here. And the way it's made is you can't get, you can't put one, um, in other words, you can't take and stick something one in one side. It won't go in. You've got to do them both at the same time. So this is an outlet you can't really test. Not that we have to. You only can do it with one of them electrical uh, polarity checkers that'll pull, that'll push both sides at the same time. So anyways, that's the project, and then then there's going to be a cover on it like that, and this, the switch will be on the side. Probably, I could put it on the, on the top and mount my input wire, I mean the light wire rather, on the side. Okay, here's a little quick shot of the uh, dim bulb tester socket section. I have an eyelet here with the screw, the, the green grounding screw going to the uh, the outlet because uh, the wire that comes into this from the isolation transformer which the ground prong is grounded, not the neutral but the ground prong is because if we want to plug in a piece of equipment that has a ground prong on it, you want to make sure that your ground prong is grounded. Okay, so the outlet is going down onto here. If you notice, I drilled out a hole here using my uh, stepping bit set right here. Unibit. And... Um, we got the hole, well, it's not perfectly centered because the drill slid a little bit. So we got the toggle going in here like this. Okay, so I had to mount this ground 
in here first because there'd be no physical way. So I tighten the hell out of it because once I get this switch in, of course I gotta solder a couple of little leads on here first. This switch is gonna sit here like this. So when this thing is up here, like this on the wall, we're gonna have a bypass switch for the bulb, which will be hanging down at the bottom. And this yellow wire will come in on the side. And actually, no, it goes this way. My mistake goes this way. The power cord is coming out of the bottom. The toggle will be on the top. So your outlet will be this way, of course, with the grounds face down, like that. And on the side, we'll put a Romex connector in here, and now we'll accept this wire. So I wanted to give you a little progress report on this. Uh, for those of you who are interested, when I get this done, I'll just draw up a simple schematic. It's very basic. This is nothing more than a bypass switch for the light. So in other words, it shorts out the bulb once you establish that there is no um, heavy current drawer and, this, and the unit under test is safe to put the, a full voltage on it. So all this does is go up to that bulb that's going to be going up in there. It'll probably be 100 water, I guess. Okay, what I did here is I mounted my switch. There's the two wires for it. Don't matter if they're red, I know what they are. And this is the ground for the outlet right here. And um, I put a washer on the switch under the switch nut because the way the nut is, it went down inside off off center a little bit and it was hard to tighten up the nut because it is, uh, you know, the cutout here is recessed a little. So putting a the washer there took care of that. So, and there's plenty of clearance. There's no shorts or anything in there. So anyways, um, now what I got to do is in here, I got to put this, strip this out and put this through there and then I got to get a three wire with a plug to come up to here so it can plug into my um, isolation transformer right here which of course is in turn plugged to the variac. Now I don't need to use the variac I can turn it to 115 volts just leave it there run it run the dim bulb through here and the dim bulb will take care of that. So I have the best of both worlds the way I'm setting it up here. All right, um, I got the ground on. I got the uh, neutral on. This particular wire that I have had two black wires coming out of it. So I put a white piece of heat shrink on here so identified a neutral, because as you know, the neutral is the wide blade. So I already metered that out, make sure we don't screw up. Now, the dim bulb, or, or the bulb itself, of course, is in series with the hot side, which is here. And the switch is nothing more than a bypass across the bulb. The bulb is in series with the load. So what I'm going to do is finish wiring this up. This is the hot side right here. So what I'm going to do is to connect one of these to here and the other one will connect to the outlet. This type of outlet, you stick them in and you tighten the screws down. So that works out good. So let me do that. I'll come back when I'm all done here. All right. Now, this wire here is the hot wire coming from the plug. It's going to go through 
in series with the bulb. The bulb has a black and white wire, but like I say, there is no neutral or hot side because the bulb is in series. I mean, you can say that it's hot. One's going to be hot and one's going to be, you know, the return. So these two get joined together with a wire nut. And these two red wires go to the switch, which go across the bulb. So actually, this is all hot. It's just turned off with the bulb. If, if the bulb is burned out, it'll be turned off or turned off with the switch or turned on with the switch. So in a sense, this is all hot, if you know what I'm saying. All right, I'm going to plug in this. I don't have a radio right now. Uh, I'm going to plug this into uh, the outlet here. What I got now, I, I didn't, I got to go dig up a 100 watt bulb. Um, that's only an LED. That's the bulb I took out of my uh, light over here. Okay, I got it plugged into my variac because I can monitor the current. Okay, we're drawing current because we got the heater. And the switch is turned, but I'm not sure which way it is. I think the switch is off, so in other words, the bulb should be lit now. I'm drawing uh, about two amps right now, and here comes the heater. One hundred and seventeen volts, two amps. So about two hundred little. This is two hundred uh, fifty watt heater. Okay, now this is the position of the switch. When you want to bypass the light. In other words, when the device under test is okay. All right, now we're through the this we're going through the bulb. And of course, this will light bright because this is only like a, a 10 watt bulb or something like that, LED. 15 watts maybe, I don't know, I'll have to look on the base of it. So naturally the uh, um, the current dropped down because it's just draw, it's the, the electric heater is nothing more than a resistor in series with the bulb right now. So actually our unit is working very well. I just got to put it all back into the box again. But before I do that, I got to screw it up to here. So the heater is still on. I mean, it's plugged in series into the with the bulb. I'm gonna close the switch, I should say. Okay, now the heater is coming on. You can hear it. And we're doing our two amps once again, the 118 volts. So everything's working very well. So now if I wanna go through the isolation transformer, I can do that. It helps if I plug in the isolation transformer. There was a surge that just pegged this meter to three amps. That was probably the transformer. I don't know why there'd be a surge, but there is. Okay, so this is how we'll use it. Most likely going through the isolation transformer now I can choose to go to the isolation transformer down on the outlet strip, which is fused at 15 amps with a circuit breaker. For my instruments, I have my scopes plugged in and a few other instruments and the light here. Or I can go through this. So I got the choice of what I want to do. So let me get this all hooked up. I'll come back on this video when it's all finished. All right, she's working. Just got to put the cover plate on it. And 115 volts going in. We're drawing about two amps with the electric heater. Dim bulb is not on. 
Now, when we're testing a radio, of course, naturally we're going to use like a 200 watt bulb in here. 100 watt, I don't think I can get a 200. Um, I don't even know if I can get a 100 watt anymore, but anyways, um, I might have a 100, but they're crappy bulbs and you just tap them and they burn out. That filaments just fall apart in them. Cheap junk now, Chinese, you know. All right, so if I turn this switch here to bypass the, um, in other words, to take the shunt off of the bulb, now the heat is off, and uh, this is what would happen if you had a uh, uh, radio or TV or whatever uh, that had a short in it or a heavy current door. Of course, I'm not going to use this bulb. I'm just doing this as a test. Now, I just got to put some um, little wire things in here and just, just bring it over like that. Little plastic clamps like I have here. Only I got a couple small ones I can put over here. I left myself pretty slim here, but I'm right up against there. All right, so that concludes the um, dim bulb section of this video. That is my dim bulb arrangement. That's all she wrote.